Ellie from Imagine If, and I'm here to read a story about a cross-country skiing cat. The book I'm going to read for you today is one of my absolute favorites. It's called Cross Country Cat by Mary Calhoun, illustrated by Eric Ingraham. And I tried to get my cat to come with me to read it for you, but he was sleeping and couldn't be tempted out on the snowy day. So I figured I'd strap on a pair of cross country skis and read it for you myself. This is Cross Country Cat. Henry was a hind leg walker. It started with chasing flies, and he decided he liked the way of prancing. He even danced the music of the stereo when his folks weren't watching. Of course, Henry chased mice on his forefeet, but when he felt full of the old pizzazz, he stalked around on his back legs, switching his tail for balance. Some smart kid, said the kid and the woman. Idiotic cat, said the man. Still, Henry plants, pranced to please himself. One time they were all up in the mountain cabin for a weekend of cross-country skiing. You ought to try skiing, Henry, said the kid, and he decided to make a little pair of cross-country skis and poles for Henry. In the carport, the kid found an old roof shingle that was starting to curl up at the ends. Out of the shingle, he carved two skinny skis. He waxed the bottoms and tacked leather thongs to the top for the foot bindings. Small ends of pine boughs with their brushes of needles made pretty good ski poles. Do you think he's going to like to go skiing? <laughs> Out in the deep snow, the kid stood Henry up and pushed his back feet into the ski bindings. Okay, Henry, try a slide. Wow! Henry refused. He dropped down on his four feet and the front end of him sank into the snow. Snap! He spat snow off his whiskers. Those people were crazy to want to slide around on the snow. Guess you'll never make a skier, cat, said the kid taking off Henry's skis. Next afternoon, they packed up to go home. Henry settled in the back of the four-wheel drive on a stack of dirty long underwear. Ugh. He was smoothing out his whiskers for the trip when suddenly he remembered his mouse. He left it under the kid's bed. His mouse was a fluff of purple yarn and Henry never traveled anywhere without it. He slid out of the car and dodged into the cabin as the kid struggled out the door with a big garbage sack. Henry found his fluff and shoved through the cat door just in time to see them drive off. Meow, meow, he yelled, but they didn't hear. Henry's tail bushed out in fright. They wouldn't know he wasn't in the car until they got to town that night. Henry didn't think they'd come back for him. The man was driving and the man didn't like cats anyway. Henry would miss them though. He liked to purr up against the woman's shoulder with his hind feet braced on her arm. He liked it when the kid smoothed down his back and pulled his tail, just a tiny tug that kept his ears standing up straight. And he liked to sleep in the man's chair. Oh man, I wonder how he feels. Maybe lonely and sad? terrible thing, he couldn't get back in the cabin because the cat door only opened out so that skunks couldn't come in. And there was snow all over the ground. Snow was coming down thick on the road, snow too deep for even a smart Siamese cat to walk through. The only th way was to ski out on that cold, wet stuff. Henry's whiskers turned down in disgust. Nevertheless, he put down his mouse and hunted around the carport until he found his little skis and poles tossed in a corner. Henry was already warmly dressed for the journey. What else did he need? Provisions. Henry cleaned out the carport of mice and tied them up in a rag. He put his purple fluff mouse in the rag sack too, and then he tied the rag sack to the end of his tail. At last, he pushed his hind feet into the ski bindings, and he was ready to go. Henry took a step in the snow and a step, step teeter. He almost fell, but he lashed his tail and caught his balance. Cross-country skiing was harder than it looked. Plod, plod. It was hard to, get, hard to get any kind of glide and slide. No rhythm. Henry remembered a song the kid used to sing. This old man, he played one. He played knick-knack on my thumb. Henry tried stepping his skis, and, skis in time to the song. He sang, yow me yow, yow me yow, yow me yow me yow me yow. And his skis went step and slide, step and slide over the snow in perfect rhythm. 
By the time he got to knick-knack paddywhack, he was skating on his skis and waving his tail to the beat. His pine bough ski poles plopped neatly br neat brushy tracks in the snow, and his rag sack swung from the tip of his jaunty tail. The snow stopped falling and the sun came out. Henry narrowed his blue eyes against the sparkle of snow as he skied cross-country toward town. In a meadow, he came down a hill. Of course, Henry's knees were built bent. He crouched for the run, loose and breezy. When he got to the bottom, he liked that slide so well, he trampled back up the hill and came down again on his smoother trail, fairly sailing. wee Now he knew why the kid liked to slide on the snow. Down by a stream, Henry saw an elk plowing through snow up to its belly. It was heavy going for the poor old elk. Yow me, yowl! Henry zipped on by in the top of the snow. Some smart cat. Lippity up from behind, a snowshoe rabbit pulled alongside Henry. Think you're fast, said the rabbit. Want a drag? Yow me, yowl! Slide and glide. For 30 seconds, Henry raced with the rabbit, and then the rabbit disappeared over a hill while Henry was still plodding up the slope. Smart Alec Rabbit. The way led through some woods. As Henry skied toward the trees, a black crusted blue jay, blue jay swooped down, screeching and scolding, stay out of the woods, my jay, jay. Sna! Henry snapped his teeth and rushed after the bird, thrusting with his poles. But the blue jay flew just ahead of Henry, dipping and lifting and jeering until it soared up to a pine tree. Smart Alec Jaybird. The sun went under a cloud, and the woods seemed lonely after the jay went away. Yow me owl! Henry was getting tired. He stopped and untied his rag sack and ate his mice, all but his purple mouse. Just as he was tying the sack behind his tail, Henry saw something slinking after him, way back in the woods. It was a coyote. Yowl! Henry wanted to scramble up a tree, but his back feet were caught in his skis. <gasps> Henry dashed between the trees with his tail bushed out, and he speeded up his rhythm. Yow, yow! Smart cat! Smart cat! The coyote came loping along behind him. Henry darted out of the woods to a field where the snow was deeper for the coyote to run through. But Henry's legs were tired, and his rhythm stumbled. Stupid cat! Stupid cat! <gasps> oh, no! It was getting dark and starting to snow again. The coyote drew nearer as Henry's beat slowed to foolish feline, foolish feline. His tail drooped and dragged on the snow. He could hear the coyote snapping its teeth and Henry, plodding one ski after another, thought it was end of the line, end of the line. Oh no, do you think he's gonna get eaten by the coyote? Just then, Henry's skis tilted on the steep downhill slope. The snow was crusted on top, soft underneath. It was just right for a cross-country cat, just wrong for a heavy coyote. Henry gave a good push with his poles, and meow, he sailed down the mountain. Yep, yep, yo! The coyote howled, sinking into the deep snow far behind. Oh, that was so close. Henry skidded out onto the road below great glaring eyes. No, the eyes were the lights of a car coming. The car had two heads. The man's head stuck out one window, trying to see through the falling snow. The man looked pretty mad, but he was coming. The kid's head stuck out the other window and he saw Henry. Look at that cross country cat, yelled the kid. Quickly, Henry threw away his ski poles. While the car was stopping, he pulled his feet loose from his skis and shoved the skis under the snow. He thrashed and floundered in the drifts. Help me, owl, he cried piteously. Oh no. After all, the man had come back for him. Let the man think he had saved Henry's life. Some smart cat. <laughs> I love that book. Well, if you're inspired to go skiing, I have a book recommendation for you. This is Ski Tips for Kids um, by Mike Cleland and Alex Everett. And this is part of a series of incredible how to ski books. And this one is fabulous for learning how to ski with your children. It is illustrated with really cheerful cartoons and it goes from everything from how to dress warmly, how to put on your skis, um, how to even like walk with skis <laughs> and everything you need to start learning how to ski.
So this book is available at Imagine If Libraries and I'll return it tomorrow so <laughs> you can check it out. Um, but put this one on hold, this is really fabulous. Well, thank you for skiing with me. I think I better get, my, get, some, get some miles under my skis. Take care everybody, bye-bye.